Hello, welcome to episode 105 of Fang and the Bang about Gangrel, and I guess it's Gangrel. And then Raymond over there in the corner. What's going on, Raymond? How What's are going you? On, man? I see you all decked out, red and black. Do you mean decked out? No, this is my Halloween stuff. Even though I, I don't know if I'm going to be in here for Halloween or not. I got a lot going on with. Um, uh, I just got a lot going on right now. Uh, I think I sent the thing to you, man. I should have pulled the graphics up for. Um, I'll put it up. You'll pull it up for the yeah. horror con. So. Uh, uh, what is that, the 11, 11, 12, 13? Yeah, I think it's the 11th and the 12th and the 13th in Richmond, Virginia. Um, Galaxy Con. I think it's Nightmare Weekend. It's called Nightmare Weekend. So yeah. I'll be doing a little fanging and banging out there. Um, so that's next Thursday. I'll fly out. Today's Thursday, a week from today. So I'll fly out next Thursday out to Richmond and I'll be there Friday, Saturday, Sunday all day. Signing, doing autographs, whatnot. I'll sing in a video. Whatever you need, I'll be doing that. And then... Uh, I get back home from there, and then Thursday I fly back out again. That that Thursday to uh, San Francisco because my homie TMD is getting married, and I gotta uh, perform the ceremony. <laughs> man, perform the ceremony. I gotta perform the ceremony, man. Oh, <laughs> like, Wait, didn't he perform the, the ceremony at your wedding? Yes, he did. Yeah. So Susan good. said it's only right I do it. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, but I'm not much of a talker, but, but I have a podcast, but I don't really talk on it. I don't ha- come here and do it hardly, and I don't know if anybody listens to it. But uh, but I, I guess I'll go up there and ramble for a few minutes going, yo, I got to mind myself because this girl don't play around either. So if I mess the, that ceremony up, I'll probably get myself in trouble. So <laughs> Is it themed? Like gothic or like how you and Luna? Uh, like is it gothic? No. Or how is he? No, no, no. no. I, I, I think I mentioned it before. It could, it, it could be an interesting funeral. God, God, not funeral. But his funeral is not his funeral. So hopefully his girl don't listen to it. It is a funeral. Don't get married. Don't get married, man. Don't do it. Uh, I'll be up there. And I'll be, does anybody uh, forever hold your peace? Or whatever. When you guys speak up, I'll be like, no, I'm, you don't do it. <laughs> but uh, it's going to be an interesting one. I, I think I mentioned it a while back because like, he, he's like, his dad is like, a Mexican, Mexican American, or Mexican, right? His mom is white, so whenever we go anywhere, they literally think uh, his mom is probably my mom. That's how white his mom is. But his dad, like, he, he looks is super Latino. You can see all his heritage, right? So, and then his girl is, is African American, so she's black and they church going family. So it's gonna be an interesting reception for sure. <laughs> In a wedding, I think. Everybody will be chill, but it's going to be an interesting reception there once people start getting a little Jesus juice in them and they start drinking <laughs> a little wine. We'll see what goes down over there, man. Hopefully, they uh, I won't bust no jokes about, uh, I'm pretty sure I said on here before about, you know, what color bandanas they wearing out there as they get married. <laughs> going to look like a big gang meeting out there, man, oh. <laughs> out there in the West Coast of Cali. But... Um, I'll be out there. I'll be the, 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 the justice of the peace, the, the judge of the wild, wild west out there in Cali. On the left coast is the best coast, so they say. I say the right coast is the right coast. <laughs> you can look at it any way you want. Or you can just be worldwide and have love for everybody like I do, I guess. I love everywhere. Everybody, everywhere I go, everybody. Nothing but love. But no, um, I'm, I'm nervous about doing that wedding. and Because, uh, you know, uh, I ain't no preacher or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> like, you think? Uh, yeah, I, I know what you're gonna say. I should be a preacher, probably. No, what, what you gonna say? I don't think he's looking for a preacher. No, no, he's not looking for a preacher. He just he probably just feel, felt like he had to have me do it or something. I, I, I like because he did mine, but I would have been good if he said, "Nah, don't do it, <laughs> homie." And I'd have been like, "Thank God!" Like, because I'm getting I'm more nervous doing stuff like that than than wrestling and stuff. So, um, it, does this October feel different for you? A little bit because. I haven't worn any fangs in such a long time. My, when a while back before I had the hip surgery, my teeth got broke. Remember, and I had to get all a new bridge and all this stuff and get my teeth straightened up. Well, I can't. My fangs don't. The fangs I've been wearing since '98. I can't get the fit anymore. So I haven't worn any fangs. So, uh, and I haven't been on the road yet to experience the seasons to see that like fall is coming in or feel any cool Christmas in the air or anything. So I haven't been doing shows and I haven't been experiencing any weather cooling down or any change. So it's just been that like hottest month of the year to me in Florida, September. So it hasn't felt much like October at all, but we're only what, three days in October here, but it's like 92 degrees outside already. And it's not even, 
it's not even one o'clock yet. <laughs> so yeah, no, it doesn't, nothing feels different about October. Maybe when I go do this nightmare, nightmare weekend and stuff in Richmond, I'm sure it'll be a little bit cooler. I haven't checked the weather yet, but I got to figure out a fang situation. So if you're listening on here and you can help me out with my fang situation, please write and let me know. Uh, because I was going to go all cheesy and order the, uh, the ones that all the cosplayers wear and all that, uh, uh, the saber tooth fangs or whatnot. And I did order them uh, just to, so I could try to get by until I get to a dentist and get some made up. I think I'm going to get with Domino. There's people might do a documentary and they'll do uh, where they 3D print me some fangs. But I got to go to a dentist and get the mold real quick. And uh, not, I'm not going to be able to get that done in time. But that's what I plan on doing. But I'm desperate. Like, I, I, I don't know if I can go do a convention without fangs. So I might feel like like you would feel without clothes on outside, you know, standing out there in the corner. No fangs, you're not really a vampire, so how do you expect people to come up and uh, want to take a picture with you and stuff if you're not, like, in character? Yeah, yeah. A, a spirit right down the street. Yeah, but... The, 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 you, don't, you don't think they... they, they the problem they, is, is this bridge is so thick that nothing fits it. It won't nothing fit on it because it's, this like, this thick because my teeth have been broke out, so that bridge is super thick where... I could wear a fang on one side. I can go around like this, kind of, uh, you know, like, like an old hillbilly vampire or something. And I've done that before when my teeth were knocked out. When I had permanent fangs, I had one. This was knocked out. That's why there's a bridge over here. And, and uh, So it's always been an issue, but I haven't been fangless for this long. You know, uh, this is a long time being fangless. And uh, I'm not thankless, but I'm fangless, you know. And uh, can't do much fang in a bang without your fangs. And, uh, but, but, uh, but I'm going to get out to Richmond. I'm going to sort it out, figure it out, and get it done somehow. So I'm looking forward to seeing everybody there, but then I'll get out to that wedding. And, um, man, I don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know how people have um, traditions, the Christmas traditions. They watch the, the what is that reindeer name? Rudolph. Rudolph. Reindeer Games. It's Ben Affleck. That's actually a good movie with the powwow safe. Because there's a gun in it, Reindeer Games. You ever seen Reindeer Games? I was talking about the cartoon. You said Reindeer. Oh, that's Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Though. Yeah, and then he Reindeer. But you said Reindeer Games. No, no, I said the guy with the reindeer. No, that's a good movie, Reindeer Games. It's a Christmas movie. But Violent Night's the best Christmas movie out. You ever uh, seen Violent Night yet? No, I've seen Harlem Nights. Oh, Harlem Nights, shoot off the pinky toe. That's good, too. <laughs> but but no, Violent Night you'll like because it's a Viking, that's Santa Claus, and all that. It, it's <laughs> good. It's called Violent Night. Trust me, you will enjoy it. So you have any uh, Halloween traditions? You you watch any is it music, movies? You know I used to, I used to be all about Halloween. Hell, I even got married on Halloween. But now I, I just don't um celebrate it as much. But you know I I did uh I sent you a message asking if you uh, what was your like Halloween. top ten Halloween songs. But we could we could start with the wrestling like the top five wrestling Halloween <laughs> type of songs, or we could start with like. Your top ten Halloween songs that you would play like in the Halloween season, like where we are now. No, Which, I want I want to know your top, your uh, your top Halloween songs. My top Halloween songs. Well, I, I wrote them down. Like, but I love I love a lot of songs. But um, what goes? What do you want me to start with? Number ten and work back. I gotta go back here. Yeah, yeah, go backwards. <laughs> Number ten, the song is titled Halloween, or it could be Halloween too because I like them both by the same artist, The Misfits. You're probably going, who's the Misfits? Yeah, yeah. They love it. I don't to the Misfits. Number nine, the Monster Mash. They did the mash. They did the Monster Mash. You like that one, right? Yeah, I mean, you might not like it. Then we got to go a little Freddy Krueger, a little Dokken, Dream Warriors. I got some information on him later on. Oh, I don't, don't scare me of Freddy Krueger. I believe he's legit, man. Uh, what was I at? What did I, what, I was eight? Yeah, yeah, you were in Freddy All Krueger. right, so number seven. Oh, it's an older one too that you might find silly, but I, I enjoy it. I, I, I listen to it all year long, not just Halloween, but Werewolves of London. You know, I saw a werewolf drinking a pina colada last night. No, you don't know that Werewolves no, of maybe, London. Maybe if I hear it, you would know Werewolves of London. Uh, like number six. Uh, now it, it could be from either artist. It must be Halloween. It could be a Andrew Gold or the Marilyn Manson version. So you can go super, super traditional Andrew Gold. Which is very good. And I might like that better, but I also like the Marilyn Manson version of that. And number, uh, where are we at? Six. So number five would be, who are you going to call? Maroney? Ghostbusters. Yeah, yeah, Come yeah. on, man. Ghostbusters. Ray Parker. Ju Come. The commercial brainwashed me, bro. Uh, you don't remember that commercial? Man, don't be messing with the ghost. Okay. What, what are you talking about? What ne commercial? Never mind. The, the fans would know. The fans would know. Who, what, what commercial? Who are you going to call? Maroney. Who's Maroney? Maroney. You know, never mind. Never mind. Maroney is a commercial 
Who you gonna call? Ghostbusters. Whoa, no, you call Ghostbusters. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. How <laughs> would you watch it? Must be free TV. <laughs> I gotta go call Maroney. So, you gotta call Maroney for some lasagna. What, what, what's Maroney do? What? I think it's a car dealership. It's a car dealership. So he going he going. I was a know. kid. I was a kid. Let me remind me to talk to you about getting hustled. Now I, I got hustled, and I'm gonna tell you I got hustled for like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven k that I don't even have. I'm going to focus on, how's your credit? <laughs> I'm like, uh, I said, put it on hers. And then when I went to the bathroom, I came back, Susan had them put it on mine. <laughs> then I, they had me a phone to verify my identity. And I'm like, what? And I'm on the hook for $7,000. $7,000, Raymond. I don't know if you'll, this is a whole other topic. I don't know what your thoughts and opinion of this. Or are people out there, uh, remind me of this to come back to this because it, it's haunting me. That's very Halloweeny. I, I I think they hustled my underwear right off me, man. I think they sold me, sold me water in the middle of the ocean, or like a freshwater stream or something, like, you know, and whatever. No, no refunds. I don't know. Uh, I asked Susan to check into that today because warranty. What they they were supposed to give us some results uh, today, and they're saying, oh, we we'll have a technical things next week. Well, it didn't take them long to want, make me. I have to agree to that seven thousand dollars, and I have to pay for that. So I, that I don't have, I had to go do on a, a thing. But where are we at? Number six. Yeah. Oh, it must be Halloween. We went over that. So number five, Ghostbusters. Yep. Number four, the theme from the movie Halloween. So Halloween. So I had to throw a movie theme, and there was a couple movie themes because Dream Warriors was one of Freddy Krueger. Number four is Halloween. Number three, little Alice Cooper. Welcome to my nightmare. You don't know any of these, do you? If I hear them. You, if you hear them, if okay. I, I hear them. Number two, couldn't leave MJ out. It's just a thriller. A, you know, thriller. All right, of course whatever. I know. Whatever, I just scared everybody with that. Haunting video. And number one, Raymond. Number one. What do you think my number one is? I might know. What? The Undertaker. No, I would be in wrestling stuff. Oh, okay, okay. I don't know, no, no. This is just regular, like, but movie. I don't know, music that's kind of like you would play during Halloween season. Like, uh, you're chilling at your house, and maybe the kids are coming trick or treat, and you're just listening and drinking some uh, Jesus juice and getting ready to pass out candy <laughs> and trying not to look like a pedo. Like, <laughs> like, number one. Uh, even, even number one is in the title. Number, it's in the title of the song. Number one. I don't know. I'm lost. All right, black number one, typo negative. Black, black, black number one. No. No. Typo negative. Nicole wouldn't have known either. Yes, she would have. No, she wouldn't have. Black number one, typo negative? Oh, yes, she would have. She would have. Holly Dead comes out to that song, too. Uh, uh, Kid Cadet would have known, too. Of course, Kid Cadet knows. She'd have known the Misfits. She'd have known Alice Cooper because she's a big Alice Cooper fan. She actually has Alice Cooper eyes on her a tattoo on her leg, the two eyes. I don't think we could have made it to one without. Yo, I'll be seeing Kid Cadet at the Nightmare Weekend. I saw she's on the panel. I was gonna say, I don't think we could have made it to number one without both of you breaking out into like musicals. Doing that, yeah, but she can sing. I can't sing. She's been singing on. Uh, I've seen her on um, her Facebook or Instagram. I'm not sure which one it is, but uh, I've seen she's been she's doing a lot of singing on there and stuff. But she's she's moving on up like. Oh man, uh, moving on up, but uh, she's doing her thing. All right, so that was the top ten. Like there, you might not agree. People might not agree. Why don't uh, if you're listening, why don't you guys shoot in the comments your top ten? Turn me on to something. I, I mean, I listen to so much. I love everything. I love all music, but there's maybe there's something I'm missing that I might want to dig and chill out on Halloween. Like Ghost Town. I love Ghost Town. I didn't, I didn't put that in there. There's so many uh, songs that I like. You, okay. and, and, um, you know, uh, I, I could have went with the Ghetto Boys when mine's playing tricks on me, but that's you know that's more about drugs. But it feels Halloweeny to me, you know. It's crazy because I, I, I <laughs> you mentioned uh, what Freddy Krueger on there. I'm, I'm trying to remember like the theme song for Freddy Krueger. Like one of them was Dream Warriors, Duncan. Uh, I just I played it for you earlier, but you didn't want to hear it, nothing to do with it. The um, you you just came back at me with some Yellow Wolf. You what? said, "Oh, you want a White Boy? I'll give you Yellow Wolf. Check him <laughs> out." That's what you said. That's the um, something the, popped the trunk or something like that. What'd you, what'd you call it? What's that song? Uh, uh, don't make me pop the trunk. Don't make me pop the trunk. <laughs> That's so, what the hell does that mean? That's you know, just bad. You know what I'm... Uh, you know what? Uh, what do you call that? A guilty pleasure? Stuff you watch that you don't want nobody to know you watch? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so my, mine's the, uh, what is it called? It's um, Florida Hoods or something like that. <laughs> you ever watch that? Like, on YouTube or something? Yeah, it's on YouTube. Homeboy just rides around going, oh, we're in like Liberia now, Hollywood, Florida. <laughs> like, or right, we're in Papano Beach. Here's the ugly corner. We're over here in Lauder Kill. Over here, you know, you don't want to mess around. They drive with their headlights. He just rides around riding on the streets. I wait for somebody to gank his ass. I wait for somebody to get this dude, man. And he's got his girl ride with a camera. You know, somebody going to like light that car up one day. He's going to come around the wrong time. Because he goes around the block twice. He goes, I better not go three times. He's like, no shit. You should have went one time down that block. <laughs> like, they might think he's the police and they may not bother him. Nah, he sound he he might he could think he might think he's some kind of undercover like or, or investigator or something. I don't know though. He sounds like he's riding with a. I don't know if I've ever seen his face in the videos. He probably don't put him in there, but but that was yeah. So that's the top no top ten. Um, that I, I will see. That was just randomly off the top of my mind this morning when I was doing cardio. I was like, oh, Raymond, come up here and give the top ten Halloween song. I asked you to give me ten Raymond, but you didn't. You gave me Yellow Wolf, Air Tonight, and what else did you give me? Uh, thriller, of course. And Thriller, number two, you had Michael oh, Jackson. No. Number one, you had Yellow Wolf. Uh, uh, what was it? Nightmare, Kill, Kill My Nightmare. Yeah, Kill My Nightmare, Yellow Wolf. Number two, MJ, my, uh, Thriller, Michael Jackson, Thriller. Yeah. Number three was Phil Collins in the air tonight. Can you please explain that one? Because you either are w- w- being stalked or you're afraid of drowning. Which one is it? <laughs> so Halloweeny about in the air tonight? Oh. I, don't, I didn't. I, I didn't sink that deep into the lyrics. I only found out just the feel of it, just to feel the, the vibe of it, the, the vibe. Because you can feel it coming, so you can feel like fall coming and Halloween coming in the air. Yo, tonight. whoa! Are you being attacked? There's a spirit in here, bro. You, you and your triangles and and and. and. <laughs> Why am I getting chills? Look at that, my face is chilling. Look at that. Look at my legs, goosebumps. <laughs> like, you see him? My legs goosebumping like something all around me right now. You feel it? It's on my face. Look at my goosebumps. Look, 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 look. I'm goosebumping everywhere. Look, look. <laughs> hey, get off me. All right. Whoa, it's all on me, Grammy. Like, I'm serious. You see the goose? Let me with goosebumps like coming off. They won't stop. Look at them. <laughs> Oh, I just thought you was full of it, man. Get up, get up off me, man. Just you and your yambi weed and all this stuff you be taking. I don't know what. All bad. I didn't wear my energy thing today either, my necklace. You better give me one of your medallions over there. Wow. No, it's still chilling. It's still hanging. Yo, this thing is still... I'm mad about something. You see all them goo? They're going away now. I just thought you was just tripping, but the, the, like, it felt like something was just swirling around me, like just engulfing me. Well, something broke. Something burnt out. Something knows I got to go ride a show. <laughs> I wonder what triggered it. <laughs> me? Um, what does that have to be I me? I was lonely, man. I was really talking about the air tonight. She's done this before. Nah, I don't know who it was. I don't know. But they ain't yeah. messing with me now. The goosebumps, all that. But it went up this leg. Then it went around my faces. And it went down this leg. Then it came back up this leg. I don't know it's, if that's something. It's you, not me. No, I ain't never denied that the junk don't be following <laughs> me. But I think there's something really bad that's trying to latch on to me. What if it's not a bad thing? What if it's a good thing? Some of it is. Uh, Man, well, I was just about to get into um. Uh, I was gonna ask you right before that, like, what made you? Oh, do do we cut back in? Where we're we? Are we I don't we're back know where in. What was that? Uh, we were talking uh, about the air of the night, weren't we? Yeah, we were talking about that. You asked me what what was so creepy about it, just okay. that, that the eerie feeling and the vibe of it. Uh, all right, ready? Oh no, I'm yeah, I'm gonna oh. cut it back in. It's fine. Oh okay. Yeah, yeah. Man, Raymond. I'm not coming over here anymore. <laughs> you can't get your spirits or whatnot under control in here. Like you over there claiming static and you're jumping up in your thing and then all of a sudden I get goosebumps going up one leg, 
on my face, around my face, even in the top of my head, and then I feel the goosebumps go down this leg, and then all the body goosebumps at one time. So, like, and I don't know what we were talking about. We were talking about why the air, in the air of the night you thought was Halloween or the sp- feel of it or the vibe or something. I'm a little lost because I got a little thrown off. I thought you were full of crap going, hey, there's spirits in here. Oh, boogie, 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 boogie. It's Halloween, there's spirits. Boogie, 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 boogie. But, uh, I don't know what it was, but I like I got I got a, an extreme case of goosebumps, and I haven't gotten that in a long while. Nothing's bothered me like that in a bit. So uh, uh, I don't know what's going on, but I know you got to stop taking all this Yahweh root and <laughs> what, the um, fuck? Uh, what is the Yahweh? Uh, all, all this stuff you be eating to open up your fifth eye, third eye, and um, <laughs> y'all all this all this uh, voodoo ritual stuff you be what doing the? over there. You bringing some energy around you, man. Mm. Now it's trying to jump on me, and you need to keep the energy to yourself over there, like. I've already almost went at it. I was going to go back to you and tell you a story. I almost went at it with this Christian dude. Like, you know, and as much as you know that, like, I believe in God, you know that. You know, hands down. Yeah. I've like, given you testimonies and, and things that I believe that brings me back proof of God, right? But this guy, he says, he's a hardcore Christian. So what made me think of it is when we were talking about Mary and Joy, he goes, I, the guy had come up to me. He, kind of a shit personality. Sorry. <laughs> but he is. Personality, he just kind of uh, sits around, this bald prick, you know, and uh, he had to come pick some stuff up at the school, and he just had a bad attitude, but all of a sudden, he started, like, talking to me, and then I said, he goes, oh, you teach here? And I explained things and stuff. He goes, he was being nice. He goes, yeah, I don't talk to the rest of the rap, blah, 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 blah. He, like, he had this really abrupt personality, and then um, then I said, yeah, I'm going out of town. I got to marry my buddy. Oh, oh, you're a minister. I go, well, no, I'm ordained online, whatever, you know, like, I don't even know for sure what it's even called, ordained, right? What do you call that? Um, Not even sure. Hey, whatever. I got the gimmick online so I can marry people. Not like a notary, but just a little bit. Same, similar. And, um, you know, you pay whatever, 50 bucks or whatever. I've had it a lifetime thing. So, like, I married my niece. So, I'm going to go marry him. And then he goes, he started coming at me like, do you believe that John the Baptist was Elijah or some shit? I said, man, I don't know what you're talking about. I said, I said, I said, John the Baptist is John the Baptist. What? You're not a you're not a preacher? I go, I, no. I said, I told you, I got my shit online. Oh, he got mad. He started cussing. Like, I said, man, I'll whoop your ass. I was thinking, like, I said, no wonder people don't want to go to church over there if that's how they're treating people like that. Because you know, I believe in God and all that, but if people are acting like him, man, he, like, oh my goodness, he he almost. He, he almost conjured an ass whooping and his, you know, teach him some religion with a boot in his ass. It was gonna t- and then, oh, and then I also said, oh, I'm married to a Jewish woman and today's uh, Rosh Hashanah, however you pronounce it, it's their holiday. It's, uh, so happy uh, New Year's to all the Jewish people out there, family and whatnot, all of you. Uh, this will probably play after New Year's, but happy New Year's to you. And, uh, but, yeah, he started like, oh, that's a big problem there. I go, well, I, I should just whoop your ass for that. <laughs> like, but he gave, he gave like, I don't think all Christians are like that, but he gave like, uh, Christians a really bad look, man. And maybe they are like that, and I've been missing something. Maybe that's why I avoid churches and organized religion and just believe in God, because cause of some of that craziness. But like, so, he almost got the Halloween spirit. He brought a monster out of me. I'll, I'll, sounds like, cult, like. It just sounds unhappy. If you're supposed to be happy... With your religion and Christianity, you don't go. I mean, he needs to drink more of the Jesus juice. He needs to get on the wine. <laughs> what, what is what is what is this Jesus juice? Red wine. Oh, okay. okay. Well, I get in trouble when I say even Susan didn't like me to say that. She don't like me to call it Jesus juice. I'm so thinking it's something. I'll be, be in there in church and they'll be taking the <laughs> life of Christ and they drink the grape juice, but it's like wine. But I'll be like Jesus juice, red wine, man. I call Je- I, I'll probably. I'm not thinking I'm gonna burn in hell for it, but I'm probably not gonna be well received in heaven for it. But I, I, I call it Jesus juice, red wine. I call it Jesus juice. <laughs> It makes you feel the spirit. You'd be like, "Woo!" You have enough of it. You know, you feel glow, warming, and lovey like, and get out there, and uh, you would be telling people you love them and trying to get married on that. Man, <laughs> Jesus, you see, you'd be celebrating. <laughs> you'll have a glow about you for sure. You drink enough of it. Next day, you'll uh, have a bit of a headache because all the sugars in that wine. But I enjoy a good glass of red wine. I have. Uh, I tried to have one the other night, and uh, I tried to enjoy the backyard of the new house, and I poured a glass of red wine, but. It was too hot. I didn't last out there very long. I was under the ceiling fan, but I was still sweating. Like, I was uncomfortable. We're going to have to give it till November because I, I, I tell everybody, I believe September is the hottest month in Florida. <laughs> like, September, not August. I believe September. Everywhere else it starts cooling down like we were talking about Halloween and, and feeling the fall and the seasons. Well, I was talking about it. You were over there 
probably hunting ghosts or conjuring spirits or whatever. <laughs> but but that's going on. But we didn't even get to the uh, we didn't get to the top the wrestling songs. What you, you give me your top five wrestling songs that could be Halloweeny like or whatever. Kane. I'm going to throw you off. Kane. Kane. Throw me off. All right. I got my list. I wrote it down. I, I came prepared with a list of that. I didn't come prepared for anything else, but I wrote my list down. But Kane's on my list. Kane. I'm, I'm, I, he's at number four on my top five. Okay. Um, which, which Kane? I got burned, you know. And isn't there a couple versions of Kane? Are they all the same? They're all the things. So okay. The no, 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 no. Because I got Ministry at number one, but it's the... It's the uh, Undertaker, Dark Ministry. But Kane and Undertaker are two different people. No, I'm saying that's number one, Dark Ministry. I'm saying, oh, but yeah. I'm saying Undertaker has a lot of versions of his music. Yeah. And, and number two, I have Bray Wyatt, and there's like three or four or five Bray Wyatt versions, but I got the Let Me In one. Let me in! Ah, I sound like Seth Rollins a little bit, though. Or whatever. <laughs> so I'll give you mine since being you over there thinking about yours, and then you can uh-huh. tell me yours at the time. Number one, the Dark Ministry Undertaker. And you know I'm not the giantest fan of Undertaker, but he's up there. I got to give it to him. Bray Wyatt, let me in. Uh, number three, I'm going to go a little House of Black, um, Dead Body. I don't know. I like it. it. It's good. House of Black, number three. Number four, Kane, Burned. And I, I couldn't throw Brood in there because it's myself. So I, I, I still say Free C Murder because he's innocent. He took the rap for somebody. But, you know, I got to go with Free uh, C Murder. Won't, I won't stop. Can't stop until I see blood. A little uh, off the uh, aggression. Uh, uh, CD back there? Yeah, aggression. Yep, yeah, off there. C Murder. Did you ever, I won't no, stop. You never, you never came out to that song, right? Uh, I I have randomly here and there on indies like like they didn't have any music and I I would just try to throw them off with that and then they'd be like what, but um but WWF never but they don't they, 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 the fans don't want to accept that for me to come to the ring they like kind of frown on the C murder thing but yet the other one fanging and banging jump what was you thinking stepping into the realm with the deadly sinister vampire warrior you're gonna bust that buster they love that one they don't think twice because they hear it and then they go yeah but C murder they're like. See murder like, and I love it. I love to see murder. I won't stop. I I love that. I absolutely love it. Love the nostalgia, murder. nostalgia, man. Not nostalgia. I still listen to that. It's not st- it's, 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 I still think that holds ground, man. It's retro. Better than your Yellow Wolf. Hey, I'm not saying. He I'm sounds like fan. a broke ass Eminem Yellow Wolf. I'm not saying I'm the biggest fan. Yellow Wolf probably living a double wide trailer too over there, like. Nah, he does. Guess Susan wouldn't like Yellow Wolf. I like a double wide trailer. I wish we would have went with a double wide trailer <laughs> over a, over a double wide house that's costing my ass so much damn money. <laughs> I just come over. She said, well, "What's wrong with the other day?" I go, "This house, <laughs> this house." And I want to clarify: you put that thing on there, it's gang girl's house haunted. And she said, "Is it haunted? It's not haunted." I said, "It was just energy in there. I can't sleep." But it's probably all the windows in that damn thing. And I've tinted those windows, east and west, trying to cool that house off, but I can't get it cooled off, man. Can't get it cooled off. I, Did you I, see one of the comments? If, it, if there's an entity in there, it's from hell, because it's hot. Like, hot <laughs> as hell in that house. Like One of the comments, they were like, oh, oh when they read the, the thing, they were like, well, of course Gang Girl's house is haunted. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's, like, it's like what Vince said, uh, perception is reality. Like, people just assume you're walking around black and goth. I mean, that's a good thing, right? People think um, you're your characters. If I was skinnier, I'd probably walk around black and goth, but I don't want to be the fat black goth guy. <laughs> <laughs> like, sweating him all the blacks. But I do wear all black. I do. It's just not very gothy. But so, brood, I got the brood stuff on today, but it's a little tight and snug since the last time I wore it. So quick question. What, what Going back to this, because it's a topic I want to touch on. What what creeps you out about Freddy Krueger? Like why are you afraid of a, a guy that comes... Well, I'm afraid of him is because you told me Freddy Krueger's real. He'd be astral traveling or whatever the hell that shit is. Like, like I, I, I was okay with Freddy Krueger when he just got burnt up in a, in a, in a basement or whatever, a broiler mm-hmm. room or something. I was all right with that. He was touching little kids and got burnt up for <laughs> it or whatever. So they burnt the hell out of him. It's what you get for messing with little kids. But you tried to tell me that he's a real thing, and I think it was you. Was it you? Yeah. And that he was. That they took it from that, and the guy can travel like through time into your dreams and shit like that shit mess you up because i'll go to sleep man my guards down my mind opens up and i have bad dreams man. my dreams are like death burning and fire and stuff so i'm thinking that's a perfect little uh cocktail that it, it's freddy krueger's gonna slide up in there and stuff like that so like that that freaks me out because it's psychological and it's mental you know it's in your brain it's stuff you can't control when you go to 
sleep and you shut down and it puts your guard down and your brain's still working. Things are like trying to slide in there. Subliminal so, stuff. Like Susan's probably whispering in, in my ear, you love this house. It is not that hot. Like she's probably planting things in my head, but it's working opposite. <laughs> so apparently the origin of Freddy Cougar was based on some... Um, some real, um, some inspiration All for right, the now I drink this not so healthy sweet tea that Susan told me to get off. She told me no more sweet tea. What I do, I ran to checkers and got the biggest sweet tea they had. Like a bad kid. Mm. <laughs> she said, drink the Diet Coke, it's better for you. Or water, I prefer. But but I, I, I got to have some sweet tea. I got to have one sweet tea a day somewhere. McDonald's sweet tea. I, I, yeah, but if I pull through McDonald's right now, they got the guava pies back. And I can't go in there and not get the guava pie, so... I got an addiction to guava pie, too, so I got to watch out for that guava. I love guava. All right. Where does his origins come from? Where does this Freddy cat come from? Oh, right. Since so, being, it's October, and it's kind of Halloween. So Wes Cravens, he's the one who created all um, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what that is? Yeah, he does horror movies. Yeah. Okay, 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 yeah. yeah. So he said his inspiration for Freddy. He um, also did, uh, I think Wes Craven did, he did, did he do vampires when I was John Carpenter. I think did Wes Craven yeah, sure. did Near Dark. I don't know. He's done a bunch of different horror movies, though. A lot of Wes Craven films. So. Maybe you guys need to watch him. These people that create these horror movies, and they need to be watched, right? Well, if I like P. Diddy, they probably all in that same circle. <laughs> I was going to say, my number one, I was going to be funny, but it wasn't so funny because I was going to say, my number one Halloween scary song, any P. Diddy song. <laughs> yeah, it makes music. He's going down, man. A lot of people's going down. He's taking a lot of people. I, when Channel 7 News, a lawyer comes on there and goes, well, we got our people investigating it, uh, the people claiming these things against D. Mm -hmm. And he says, you're going to be shocked. You, you just, we got to make sure these things are all true before we drop these names because the whole world's going to be like, Pfft. Oh, we're talking about the celebrities involved? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All the celebrities. All, all those freaky, getting their freak out of the freak outs. Oh man! So we're, we're we're getting the Diddy list before the Epstein list. I think so. Epstein got killed. There's no more list. <laughs> they shut list. that list down. Diddy's still up there breathing air. So like uh, it's just going down. And then they yeah. So so the lawyer said because he got all these people uh, come forward. Like a hundred people have come forward about abuse and stuff and and things that have happened. And they're naming the people now. They're investigating. And it's not Diddy naming them; it's the people that are abused naming them. Yeah, it's like between those two cases, the celebrities are the most quiet on this. Um, this well, Steve Harvey left town. I don't know what that has to do with anything, but they be saying that a lot. I keep seeing that pop up. Family Feud, Steve Harvey. Family Feud, Steve Harvey. They said he left the country the minute P Diddy got busted. It's probably a, a I don't know, you have to Google vacation. it, research it. I don't know. I didn't. I don't got that much time. Being a vacation. I just heard it. That's all I'm saying. I don't know, and then they, then they keep dropping names like Leonardo DiCaprio, but but every time I, if you put a YouTube video on, like when I'm doing cardio, they'll, they'll always show Hunter, Hunter, uh, Hunter. Hunter, and different WWE guys with when Diddy did the thing there or something. I guess yeah, he he's did. been he, WWE above. He's yeah, yeah. Here. So whatever he did, they keep showing his backstage stuff there. So they keep trying to dress. They don't say nothing about them, but they keep whoever's doing these YouTube videos like uh, uh, slander and coming after Diddy is. Or, or talking all this stuff, it, it shows Hunter and all that. Like he, like he's trying. They're trying to like subliminally connect that name or WWE with that or something. But yeah, you too. Dude, it's a hell of an addiction. Well, not for me. No, you just sit around looking up Freddy Krueger stuff and never finish explaining where he came from. What? No. I'm just, what? <laughs> so uh, Craven said it was inspired by a series of unexplained deaths among South Asian refugees in 1997 and 1980s. So the phenomenon is known as SUDS, the Sudden Unexplained Death Syndrome. So it involved young men who died in their sleep, seemingly without any physical cause. So some of the victims reported suffering from nightmares, terrors, and they expressed their fears of going to sleep, mm -hmm. claiming they were being chased by someone evil in their dream. Then when they would go to sleep, they would actually die. So uh, they, they created a whole um, uh, syndrome. Uh, Sound like they were chewing on that beetle nut over there. <laughs> They, they were tripping on chewing on leaves and shit and hallucinogenics and stuff and whatnot. So that's your that's your. You ain't never chewed on the beetle nut. I don't know what a beetle nut. Never is. took acid. No. You never dropped no microdose or, or <laughs> tabs <laughs> or sugar cubes of acid. <laughs> no, but you probably. What have. about mushrooms? You go around eating these mushrooms for health. You ever never took no mushrooms to open up your no. third eye or whatnot or <laughs> no. expand your brain and and and. and 
Nah, I'm doing the natural way. Mushrooms don't bother me. Like I take, I get take all the mushrooms people take, and I I asked somebody the other day. I said, why the mushrooms don't affect me? And they said, because you took too much acid, your brain's wide open. <laughs> like, I go, okay, fair enough. I did. I took a lot of acid when I was younger. I'm not saying, no, don't go home. Don't be doing that. I'm not recommending it. But um, I, I, I don't know what's so true or not true about all that. But uh, but I do know that that doesn't affect me. But, but it sounds like they're chewing and eating on something they shouldn't be. So let's just say it's the beetle nut. So, so you don't think there could be a possibility that Freddy Krueger could be attacking people in their, in their dreams? It's a possibility of anything in this world. But. Question though, have you ever been um have you ever have symptoms from a dream ever followed you back into the real world? Like uh, you're sweating or like pain or anything you've experienced in a nightmare? Did well, it follow you back? That, it, I've woken up from many uh, of bad dreams sweating, but <laughs> okay, I've also not sweating, but. but I've also had diarrhea when I woke up from them dreams. So I'm like you know like so it could have been a sickness, you know. Um, you're just dreaming because you're running a fever, you know, or something. I, I don't know. I don't know how to look at that. I do have a lot of horrible dreams. Um, and I could tell you that I've been dreaming a lot this past week for whatever reason, and I've been really tired. But I am dreaming a lot, but they haven't been um they haven't been bad dreams. They've been realistic dreams of like everyday stuff, like almost deja vu kind of stuff like that. Like uh, but I, I don't remember them when I wake up because of course I haven't unpacked my pyramid that you've given me, but like <laughs> it's in the closet, but it's close. Um <clears throat> it's not fueling on any sun, but it's like everyday things and situations and it's like the situation I did like what I can vaguely remember it to be whatever I did that day, but it feels like I'm doing it again tomorrow, but I did it a little bit different than I did that day. Weird dreams like that, you know. What if I told you that those aren't uh dreams? They're actually um playouts of your um You trying to tell me I'm astral whatever projecting. No, no, no. Me. What happens is is um when you go to sleep you because the present, past and the future all happens at the same time. So when you go to sleep, you see the day you're about to have, but we're programmed to forget it when we wake up. So deja vu is just you remembering um quote unquote a dream when you go to sleep you you see you already see a little bit into the future well, well i went to sleep last night i didn't see you in it because I'm, I'm, I'm a magician <laughs> oh you won the shadow hiding over there <laughs> lurking and changing your size trying to convince people you're not bad yeah, yeah, or, or 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 dangerous you get small and shrink yourself yeah, you thing is, really if you big when they call you out you don't exist you don't have to convince anybody really. ah, okay see you chewing on the beetle nut over there too <laughs> what is this beetle nut <laughs> jesus juice beetle nuts uh, the world knows okay you'll figure it out you just astral travel your ass back in time and figure it out <laughs> like, you're the one looking into the future all week yeah <laughs> I don't know, I'm just telling you what I dream. I, I don't I don't know that I'm looking into the future. But no, I I'm not even gonna go any further because like you've already had me attacked once in this room by something. <laughs> it's me. Hey, I'm I'm surprised I don't got claw marks on me or something. Hey, speaking of claw marks, you watching the penguin? You checking that out? The penguin the movie? A series on HBO. I don't have time to watch a series about the penguin. Oh, it's a really good like uh I mean I I'm not into the, the Batmans and the <laughs> Um, I never was like I, I, I mean I did, as a comic bath boom bam I've watched uh, you know like the old Batman and Burt Ward and all that uh, as Robin and um, you know, and I would watch the different Batman movies but I never like uh, was a connoisseur or really or enthusiast of the Paul Heyman of the comics and stuff like that but uh, there's a, they got a, a series now called Penguin but it's more like uh it's like watching The Sopranos or something, but with different kind of characters. I like but, Gotham. But he doesn't go around going, <laughs> wah, 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 wah. but he does have a limp. And I think somebody the other day kind of said, I walk like a penguin. But they, <laughs> they said it, but then when I asked him, I was saying, Mother Effer, are you trying to say I walk like the penguin? And what are you talking about? No, I'm confused. Like, I, like I'm still thinking he was trying to say, because I penguin walks like this. He got a metal brace on his leg, you know. But I'm going to fix that. October 23rd, I go in for this. And, uh, October 23rd? October 23rd. How long are you out for after that? I think you mentioned it before. Like, yeah, so like, so I do this convention, Nightmare Weekend. Then I go do the wedding. And then when I get back Monday, Thursday, uh, <laughs> under the knife, get a whole knee replacement. So They wanted to do it today, originally the 3rd. But because I had the wedding, they moved it to the 23rd. Um, because... It's getting really bad, like, cause the hips good and working now. The uh, the, the limp is really bad, cause like, cause I'm up straight with the hip, my hips aligned, and 
So the limp is really bad. Like this foot doesn't even touch the ground if I was to stand up and, and like straighten my leg out over here mm -hmm. and straighten this one out, it just dangles, you know. It won't, it doesn't touch. So definitely got to get done. Um, but yeah, um, in two weeks, three weeks, um, mm -hmm. 20 days, whatever that is, three weeks. So 23rd. So. That sounds fun. You're about to be a, a, a robot. I'm going to be something, man. But keep coming around here. You're going to have me possessed and, 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 and I don't know. We got to move on. Maybe. Uh, oh, yeah. Wrestling. Bad blood. Bad blood. All right. This is. I just had oh, a. Sweet tea. Bad blood. A choose of thought. That would have been Do I need to perfect. pull the thing up or you got it? No, I got it. I got it right here. I didn't watch Bad Blood. It's uh, Saturday. All right. Saturday. <laughs> of course you didn't. Unless you were in the future again. Of course you didn't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the card is uh, this Saturday. Mm -hmm. we be dropping on Saturday. Um, so uh, we'll go over the card for you. So we have the women's champ, the women's world. There's two women titles. There's a mm -hmm. women world and the WWE. Mm -hmm. So for the women's world championship, uh, we have Liv Morgan versus Rhea Ripley. I'm not even gonna ask you who you want to win because I, I kind of already know. Uh, I like Rhea Ripley, but I like I like Liv Morgan too, and I, and I like that they have a feud, and I like that it's lasted this long, and I like the fact that Dominic turned and, and uh, what's going on. I mean, I, I like st I love storytelling, soap opera stuff, so. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't um, watched a whole lot of it, like the same old song and dance on my end. I'm not watching a lot of wrestling, but I'm still trying to get used to the Comcast cable now. It's not uh, not Comcast, but DirecTV. Oh. So, like, I had it before where the, the programs would record. Now, and, and, and on top of it being DirecTV, they moved channels on me uh, to USA. They switched SmackDown from there to... And then I, NXT is still on USA too, right? I, I don't oh, NXT, it, it moved too, right? CW. So that's why. I, so I gotta, I gotta figure it out, get them all recorded, so I can keep track of it. Because you know, I like to keep track of Lola Vice and Blake Howard, um, different people, and then. Uh, but yeah, so so I, I it's really hard for me to like dial this this in. I gotta get this uh, direct TV dialed in and get an understanding of how to. Um, Maneuver. Maneuver through this the system to get the stuff recorded I need so I can just run through there. But I did find a channel on DirecTV, and I got it in my favorites. It's uh, something Fight or something. And, uh, fight TV? But it's just all wrestling, all like all, all day. So I turned it on this morning at 5 a.m., and it was like uh, Davey Richards and, and uh, the Briscoes in a tag match on Ring of Honor. <laughs> and then there'll be like OVW on it. Yeah, and, that, and, and, that's, uh, that's um, I think when I was in middle school, that's... Uh, I seen Shawn Michaels and his tag team partner, Marty Jannetty. Yeah, yeah, they had. They always had that station, even back when I was in middle school. Well, was... I seen him on it. You, you follow him? His thing popped up. I was got up at five this morning and six. I was having coffee and he's over there yelling at a door, like like <laughs> I, like he, like a fool was tripping like on cocaine or something. Like I see you, I'm gonna kick your ass. Like I don't know, man. He was putting on some random shit on Maybe Facebook. Maybe it was a spirit. Same one that no, jumped on you. No, I think he. I don't know, man. He's either trying to mess with people, and or he's, he's just he just lost it off to the, on that shit again. I don't know. <laughs> like, whatever it is, I pray for him, man. Not pray for him. All right, now we got next. Oh well, you got you you have to. Oh, I, so no, who do I pick? I, I like. I I don't know, man. I I like Rhea Ripley, but I I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I like him as the uh, the what do they call them the twins or what do they call them the. Um, Rhea Ripley and um, Dominic, or are you talking about no, uh, uh, Liv Morgan? No, 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 no. The big one, Nia Jax? Damian Priest. Damian Priest. Oh, uh, okay. the something twins or something Terror Twins, right? What do they call them? I've never even heard Terror of that. Twins or something. I I don't know. Like ever since the whole thing broke up and the faction, uh, not so much on it because I'm kind of biting day. Judgment Day. I'm biting into that whole. Dominic and that story. I don't know, man. I mean, I'm split. I'm split on it. I'm, I'm split because she's so little, and of course, it looks like Rhea could kill her. So it should kill her. But I want to see if she could be like a little rat and squeak out of it one more time and survive one more, one more. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. It got my attention. Like I, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch it to see if, if if she or I'll definitely. I gotta wait. I don't know if I get that again. That's on Paramount or what is that? The uh, Peacock. Uh, yeah, Peacock. I wonder if we even get Peacock on that. Uh, yeah, I think we still get Peacock. Well, that's a question for Susan when I get out of here today. Because, like, yeah, to watch that. Uh, yeah, I don't even know if we get it on DirecTV. I don't know. I'm so lost with that new cable system. I'm, I'm, it, it's crazy. Because she's going off her phone and adding programs and streaming it to the TV that from things off her phone, like apps and different 
shows and, and uh, networks. So like a lot of the things that we had at the other house, we don't have over here. So I, we should have Peacock. I'll, I'll ask her. I'll check. It's a subscription service. If not, then I'm just going to drive and go watch the wrestling show on Holly. And then. <laughs> we got our next uh, for the WWE Women's Championship, Nia Jax. Uh, versus Bailey. I don't know if you're well, too invested yeah, into that. I'm not invested in that. No, I'm nothing against either one of them. I'm just not invested in it. Um, who's the champion? Uh, Nia or the, uh, Queen Nia or, or Bailey? Bailey's the champion. Yeah. yeah. And um, well, Damian Priest, Finn Balor. We were just talking about them. That should be a good match. It'll be exciting. Be- Finn can do a whole lot of things, and Damian likes to do things he shouldn't do as a big guy. So, uh, so f- I think they'll do some cool stuff. That I think they're both creative minds, and they both like to do a lot of wonky and wacky kind of spots I would call it, like high risk and stuff and flying so I think that'll be an interesting match I think it'll be really entertaining CM Punk versus Drew McIntyre Hell and they show this another storyline that's like very personal like Rhea and Liv you know with, uh, Dominic cheating or whatever and leaving her now you got uh, uh, Drew who's made everything personal he's on a personal mission to destroy <laughs> CM Punk's life I've even seen, I've, as far as on Instagrams and different things, like um, a fan would had CM Punk's jacket to get signed, and he wrote F U U C U in. Uh, like he wrote some strong stuff on that jacket. I don't know if that was a, if it was an actual jacket or not of a fan, but I don't even know if he even signed his name Drew McIntyre behind it. It's real happy. <laughs> so uh, they're keeping that going strong, and with the whole bracelet and uh, and yeah, no, so that, that it should be a. Uh, physical uh, good match is that is that the Hell in a Cell match? Yeah, yeah. That so are be, you yeah. are you invested in the winner or are you just in it for the story? You don't care who wins, or you think CM Punk needs a win at this point? Yeah, but I don't know if you think Drew McIntyre needs another loss either. So, um, hmm. so that's a tough crossroads right there. Uh, thinking of interference, somebody. Mm-hmm. Nah, I'm thinking it'll be there won't be a finish to it. They're gonna drag it on to get another pay per view out of it. I think Seth Rollins is gonna intervene. Oh yeah, that's right because he's back now. He came out and stomped somebody's head the other day. <laughs> uh, uh, Bronson. Hey. Bronson. <laughs> yeah. 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 Payback. Another story. Yeah, Keeping yeah, a story there you alive. go. There you go. So send him on vacation. Now he's back. Let's see what happens. I guess we'll have to watch it to see. But but I think it's gonna. It's a shorter card, right? Uh, yeah, shorter card. So there might be a lot of. So no filler matches. There I, might I like be, uh, yeah, but there might be a lot of run-ins, curves, and swerves, you know, and stuff like that. So we're drawn yeah. out matches. Yeah. Um. Uh, then we have, of course, Cody Rhodes tagging with Roman Reigns versus Sola Sikoa and Jacob Fatu in a tag match. Mm. Uh, your thoughts on this uh, match? You think it's too soon to put them all in the ring together, or they know what they're doing? As in I, I don't know. I mean, there's all kinds of things that could happen. It could be, uh, could be a whole uh, uh, soup de swap. Well, it could be Roman turns on Cody or just leaves him there. Or it could be a, a rock appearance or it could be another Samoan to the, uh, from the outside coming in on something. Or it could be a Jacob Batu turn um, or turn a tease. Uh, I think you're just going to have to watch this and be a fan and uh, be entertained by it and, and uh, follow the story and uh, just enjoy sucks. it instead of like invest in it and watch. Yeah, That sucks for you. <laughs> you well, I'm... I'm I'm proud of Jacob that he's holding the line and doing really good though. So I'm super, super happy for him and, and his family. So that's awesome. It's, um, is that the main event too? Yeah. Yeah, it's past overdue, but the timing is right. It's, a, it's, it's there's a lot of things that could a lot of ways they could spin some things. You know, uh, it could be. What are we I mean, uh, I don't know that it would be Jacob. That'd be too soon. Um, yeah. Nowhere near. If they're gonna do anything with him, or but he started the top, then you end up. Where do you go from the top for Jacob? I mean, it's going to be a tough road, man, so uh, we'll just have to see where they go. I think there's going to be uh, multiple outside interferences, and it has been in all the, all these matches, right? So, uh, it's uh, weird, though. I, uh, it, I don't think it'll be anything cut and dry in there, not at all. I just don't, I just don't like the matchup, but uh, it'll, it'll draw because it has people wondering. Could you... Well, they're wondering the same things I'm speaking about, thinking or wishing or hoping for. Maybe they're... Um, maybe they're hoping that maybe Roman will get back together with uh, uh, Sokoa and them and it was a swerve and just to, just to beat down uh, Cody and then maybe The Rock will run in and save Cody or maybe The Rock will come out and be the head of everything who knows by Wrestlemania where this is going you know they might not even know they might have an idea and they're just doing it daily you know 
it's hard to say, but but it's exciting. I'm happy for Jacob, and I'm looking forward to it. Like, I'm not trying to compare the two because I don't think you can. But there's only been like four or five Bad Blood pay per views since the debut in 1997. But the Hell in a Cell debuted at um, a Bad Blood in October in uh, 1997. Do you think that um Drew uh, and CM Punk? You think they they have that that weight on their shoulder trying to up um up show that first uh, Hell in a Cell match? No, I, I think they have blood. weight on their shoulders every every match and every pay per view to, to to do the best they can and draw money and, and prove that they deserve the money they're getting. You know, just like any NFL player has a weight on their shoulders to make that 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 wide receiver to make that catch, that quarterback to make that pass just right, to make the right decision. They all the professional athletes, and you know. Even just because you look at them as pro wrestlers, you think it's like entertainment. Everything they do is is, is athletic and a sport to it. It, it. it takes talent, and and um, and they should want to upstage or outdo. That that's that's just the competitiveness in yeah. it to be competitive and to be a star to earn that money and to to say I deserve that money and more money. So yeah, I believe they all carry. Every last one of them are carrying weight on their shoulders. So it's safe to say that the vampire will be tuned in to Bad Blood this Saturday. If we still have Peacock, <laughs> I got to go figure that out. I, I'm telling you, I am lost with this. Uh, you may not have uh, Peacock, but do you know if you have Netflix? Have you seen the Yes, Vince I have Netflix. Of course. He's seen, did you see the Vince McMahon documentary? Clips. Or I, I, I saw some of it because when I was waiting for the dudes to do the window tent in the east and the west side of the house, it was on, but I wasn't. Paying a whole lot of attention because I had one eye on the documentary and one eye on that cat, like, like, like making sure, making sure he didn't find my stashes. You know, like gang banging in, in your house, east side, west side. Yeah, no, that's the windows, man. <laughs> like, um, yeah, no, I, I saw it, but I, I don't know. It just seemed, I don't know. It didn't seem anything exciting or, or things, uh, things that you you haven't already heard on, on no, either Dark Side of just, the Ring or another documentary. I thought it was. Planned and I didn't think it was anything special to be honest. I didn't see the whole thing. I didn't see the lot. How many is there? Five or four? Uh, six. So I got up to like three. So I don't I, know. I think it was more so of a shocker for people who weren't wrestling fans because if you had the network, you've seen a million WWE documentaries. A and E kind of exposed a little bit of the WWE to people who uh, aren't fans of WWE, but Netflix kind of opened the broader. So people who weren't really tuned into WWE, I just think could, it was weird because they go like. This was shot before the uh, allegations, and yeah. and Vince had said made a statement or something like that. It was just weird. I I, did, I thought it was anti climatic though. I didn't really think it was anything. I don't know. Yeah, I think um, who knows? But I mean, if I would have had to pay to watch it, I'd have been hot. Like, <laughs> and it wasn't that good that it didn't keep my attention. So I like. <laughs> so a, a takeaway, which you could probably uh, give some reverence on. Um, Vince McMahon claimed it bugs. Well, he said. It bugs him that people think he's really like Mr. McMahon, the character. So he's saying Vince McMahon and Mr. McMahon are two different people. They're not the same. Which Mr. McMahon, the character, though? Like, like the one that's being a, <laughs> the, the aggression or whatever, whatever that, the ruthless aggression or whatever, when they're like, there's all this sex and whatnot and kiss my ass era when there's this or that. I, I think it's all a little bit of him somewhere. I mean, maybe. Uh, so it's pointless to even ask you from your personal experience and your point of view, what's your thought on Vince saying that he's nothing like the character on TV? Was there even a difference to you? Or maybe he was playing a character for you guys, too. Because at work, he has to be the boss. I don't know. He just he just seemed like the boss to me. He was nice when he wanted to be. He, uh. You know, I think business was business with him, and personal was personal. Like, so I don't think he was always "you're fired," blah blah blah. But he would fire your ass if you didn't have value. You know what I mean? But, but, and, and then he'd probably make an example out of you. Like, but who knows what he was behind closed doors with all those other guys in these meetings? And then you hear all this stuff, these lawsuits, and this and this and that. All these lawsuits and stuff sounds like he was that character, but. I don't know. My dealings with him, he was just whatever, just a boss, you know. Boss. He wasn't over the top one way or the other. He just, he, he wasn't unapproachable, but there were some days he made himself where he wasn't approachable. But in general, he, I think he could have went up to him and said, I need to get some time with you. And he would have probably talked to you and stuff like that. I think I was too busy in my own world to take advantage or anything and see that. And, um, you know, I was too busy just trying to hide from him and not get caught doing stupid things I was doing at the time. So, so um, um, also, Eric Bischoff, uh, he also claimed that Vince McMahon kind of 
stole his character, his WCW. Uh, again, gimmick. it's like which 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 part of, like the Vince McMahon. I've seen different Vince McMahon's through the you know different yeah. as the storylines and different things where he inserts himself and stuff. So oh, maybe God. on the business end, or like you know. Maybe maybe there's some similarities, but any CEO or boss of the company, it's going to be a similar thing. You hire, or you're fired, or you're going to manipulate the talent, or you you know you tell them what to do. I mean, there's not a whole lot you can do. You're not going to be the nice giving owner and go, oh, "I'm going to give you five thousand dollars to have an extra match or something." You know, <laughs> you know on TV, you're going to be you, um, the asshole. The bosses are always portrayed to be the jerk or something. You know. Do you know if Vince watched WCW or not? Because he claimed he he doesn't watch AEW. Uh, I know you said you guys watched. I it. think. At, I think he watched, he knew everything that happened anywhere. Maybe he didn't watch the whole show, but he probably watched the key moments or had somebody bring him to him or people watching it and coming to him and then showing him to him when they felt like he needed. But I'm sure he was aware of everything that happened and, and seen it in some kind of way yeah. or something. I think it was you or Jim, Jim Cornette said that he had a person put together like a vignette of what was going on in other companies and bring it to him. I'd be Jim Cornette, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think Jim Cornette said he. I didn't say that, so that if that, if that, you might have heard it there. I don't yeah, know. he said that the people would bring him a, a, but that was, a vignette well, of what's going on in other companies. That's what I would do. i just give me a highlight reel. Yeah. So, so I'd have to waste three hours hours of my life or 10 hours of my life with all the wrestling Just give me a highlight reel of ring of honor give me a highlight reel of wcw give me a highlight reel of ecw uh, uh anybody i should keep an eye on that you think or whatever and then and i'd watch the highlight reel and pull my own opinion and whatever you know go from there all right all right so yeah. another thing you may be privy to of course you are uh they also spoke about the rise um, of john cena in the ruthless aggression era how could they not mention him in the documentary so um, it was said that I didn't. I've never heard this, but it was said that Stephanie was responsible for uh, John Cena rapping on TV. I remember you back. Oh, is she? I heard all. That, yeah, I was gonna ask you. Um, um, uh, you were around John Cena during the earlier days in his career, and so what can you tell us about that time? Uh, I I remember being around him. They sent me to. Uh, it was uh, Rick Bassman's company in California. Was it called U UPW or uh, something like that? It was in Southern California. It was like one of the first developmental territories. And uh, he was down there wrestling as prototype. And they had me go in. They wanted me to tag with Tom Howard, who was uh, he's married to uh, uh, the one of the girl workers now in, in uh, WWE. What the heck's her name? Um, oh, God. I should have took Alpha Braid today. Uh, <laughs> Still taking it? Yeah. I, well, I haven't taken it lately, but... Um, what is she? Uh, Zoe Stark, and he's he's like uh, he's married to Zoe Stark, Tom Howard. But we he was uh, under developmental, and I wasn't wasn't in the brood anymore like that. And they they were gonna put us together as a tag team, so they wanted me to go to California and do some shows with him. And uh, that's when I first met John Cena. He was called Prototype, and uh, he picked me up, and uh, he had this like I can't remember right. I, I could be wrong. But it was like an old Lincoln Town Car, big big like cruising vessel, you know, <laughs> and like. And they, it took me to a couple of shows. And it was super nice. And he seemed more interested. Like maybe he was a little discouraged of wrestling. Like maybe he wanted to do some bodybuilding or something. I think maybe he had a brother that was a bodybuilder. My memory is sketchy because I did a lot of bad things, you know, back then. But um seemed really nice. And then uh, I didn't see him much after that. And then next thing you know, he was like working Kishi, Rikishi. Um, and, and, and then he blew up. or it, it was a champion, you know. And, um, and then... When I was around him after it was John Cena, when I was back, he was, uh, Michael Hayes thought like he goes, "Yo, Gangrel, you're, you're like you're from the streets like me. You could rap and battle a little this coming there." And then they had us, he had John Cena come in and they had us do a little battle rap together, you know. And uh, back then I was on top of my hip hop and you were in your your gimmick, the uh, Gangrel. Yeah, yeah. He wanted to call me like Rapula or something like that, <laughs> like a rapping vampire from the streets, you know, or something. It didn't work. John Cena. We went back and forth, and then he just kind of walked out. But but I was like lit. I could I could go back then. I can't go now. My brain's fried. Maybe it's too much beetle 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 nuts, you know. <laughs> so that footage is out there somewhere in the w no no I don't. Oh, well maybe, record. but it was in a and it was in a room. Some they might have filmed it. I'm sure it could be oh, in the okay, archives okay. anywhere somewhere maybe. Okay. Um, but yeah, there's a possibility. Sure, yeah. I don't doubt that you ever see the light of day unless they. <laughs> like, well, I think they filmed it. I, I'm not a hundred percent sure at all, but they were in there and the cameras running. It was in like a little thing, but it was for I think it was more for Michael Hayes' humor, you know, for his. He wanted to see it and he wanted it done. But, yeah. 
But uh, it never happened, thank goodness. But I don't think it would ever worked. Uh, well, well, Rapula, <laughs> like or whatever. You never know. I'm not comp- definitely not comparing. Or come out. I can't <laughs> bite you. <laughs> and I drop like an elbow or something. Like. Our truth got Santino Morello. I mean. Our truth's good, man. Our truth. He's so good. People don't realize how good our truth is. And uh, he does a lot of comedy now. Yeah, and everything. That's probably easier on his body. But he was he was really really good as a, as a worker. And, and um, he's a really good dude. Really good human being. He's putting music out there too now and everything. He's still doing his thing, man. And I'm I'm happy for that cat. He's a nice guy. But he's a really good dude. He seems uh, genuinely funny. Yeah, yeah, I see Vince kept him around a lot, specifically like for his uh, his ability to make people laugh or smile. Mm, nah, so well, how much time we got there left, Raymond? I don't know. We're we we're up there. Okay, so I don't know if I want to go into this whole body scan thing that I got hustled on. <laughs> body scan. Yeah, yeah. I, I, we won't go into it. Another day, another episode. Another, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it, it's basically you go around. There's this thing that says pound two fifty. You get a free heart scan, right? If you're a certain age or something, so it's a 3D thing of your heart. You go in and they can see if you have uh, um, arteries, you got calcium in it and everything, and they, they offer it to you that free. But then when you go there, um, and I kind of knew that's what was going to happen. When you go there, they, they have a, a, the full body scan that can detect cancer years out and different things and stuff like They're that. Probably about that machine. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, of course, Susan unfortunately lost her mother and, and her father, both to cancer, right? So she was very concerned and. And and I, I know she wanted to do it, but like you could have just did the one body scan for like fifteen hundred bucks or something. So that would have been like three grand if we Jeez. both did it, right? Three grand. But somehow, somehow we got talked into the ten scans for seven grand or something. What? But 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 you could but they but they give you a thing that goes credit care or something or whatever where you get instant like uh, if you got good credit you get instant covered or whatever and you got to make payments so. I don't know. And then they said, oh, you'll get your results in two days. And it's been like, it's been two days. She called and they said something, oh, well, we're having new technology problems. It'll be a week. Uh, be patient. And stuff. We're getting hot. I told her, I want my money back. <laughs> I want to go get that money back. I, and then I said to her, they said they could detect cancer years out. They gave some number. I can't remember if it was like 13 years or like 18. Years. They gave a long number. I go, and I said to her, then why do I need that many scans? <laughs> like, why do I they just get one and yeah. be done? Like, be good for all those years. But whatever it is, it, it may work. It may not. I, I haven't heard of it, but it's, uh, I don't know if it's just a giant hustle. I get the vibe. It's like one of those places you'll go back next year to get your second scan, and they're gone. You know, <laughs> like, They got you to invest, get these loans, and they just dip or file bankruptcy because of COVID or something. or some, I don't know. So be... I mean, if it's legit, I guess it's a good thing to be pre- preventative. You know, you can yeah. catch a cancer early or a tumor or this or that. And I think they're legit, but, like, it just got a wonky vibe. And then now, like, you're supposed to already have results. Now, I know somebody else that did it, and he got his results quick. So maybe they were just having some kind of technical difficulties. But but I, I was like, damn, Susan, we had to go in for the the, the platinum account. Like, we couldn't just couldn't, we couldn't get the, the one-off. But, but uh so, but she's worried, and I guess uh, she wants to keep me around longer than, than I, I I foresee that I'll be around. So she's she's just trying to keep me healthy. So um, and and check on herself. So we'll see. But be, be, just be careful. Be able to say no when you go in there, man. And say not a no, 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 no. Just give me my free heart scan and let me go. <laughs> Surprised they got you in there. <laughs> she got me in there. They didn't get me in there. She got oh. me in there. I love her, so I'll do whatever she needs me to do. But blah. <laughs> that was episode um 105 I, okay. I, I don't know if we should do the once I'm get some between just me and you or is there a third or fourth person in here well, I don't want none of yours and you don't want none of mine so <laughs> but you know, they do it anyways want some get some bad enough take, 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 take some spit it out man you you got there's help. another person in here you on the Jesus shoes that got the Holy Spirit in you we did it last time right here if you go back to 104 you probably just cut it out I don't know <laughs> I'm thinking you edit the damn things. You don't. You didn't hear it in there. But anyways, that's episode one hundred five. We covered a little bit of nothing and a little, a lot of everything. So yeah, a have a bang and a bang a day. Keep rocking it through October. Stay spectacular. Oh,